Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples covering problems involving displacement, velocity and acceleration. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, as that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that the displacement of a moving object is given by s equals 6t squared plus 8. Part A says to determine an expression for the velocity of the object. Well remember to get the velocity we need to differentiate the displacement s with respect to time. So if we write down our displacement first of all, we've got s equals 6t squared plus 8. So if we write down our expression for velocity, we have v equals ds by dt, which is equal to 12t in this case. Now the way we got 12t is because we've differentiated this expression, 6t squared, with respect to time. And all we do is bring the power down and multiply it by the 6t, so we get 12t and then this power of 2 drops to a power of 1. Now notice the plus 8, that is just a constant, so differentiating that is 0. So our expression for velocity is v equals 12t. Part b says to sketch a velocity time graph for the object. Numerical values are required on both axes. Well, from part a, we have an expression for velocity in terms of time, and we're going to use that to come up with a table with values of velocity and time, and that will help us sketch a graph. So if we do that, then our table might look something like this. So we have time in seconds and velocity in meters per second. Now I'll just explain how we got these values. So we've chosen a range of time going from 0 to 5 seconds. So if you plug in all of these values of time into our expression for velocity, then we get these values here. So for example, if we substitute t equals 0 into this expression, 12t, then we get v equals 0. So that gives us 0, 0. If we plug in t equals 1, then we get v equals 12. So that gives us 12 over here. For t equals 2, we get v equals 12 times 2, which is 24 and so on. Now we need to sketch our graph. So putting in the axis first of all, and then our labels, so we've got velocity in meters per second on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. And then remember it says that numerical values are required on both axes, so we could get away with putting the origin down in the corner and then a 60 and a 5. So that is our last values in the table there. So if you were to put in the points in your sketch, you would see that you end up with a relationship like this, and that is a uniform acceleration, remembering back to motion time graphs. Question 2 says that the expression for the displacement of a moving object after time t is is s equals t squared minus 10t plus 8. Determine an expression for the velocity and acceleration and hence show that the object is moving with constant acceleration. So if we firstly write down our expression s equals t squared minus 10t plus 8, to get the expression for the velocity first of all, we need to differentiate s with respect to time. So we get v equals ds by dt equals 2t minus 10. Now the way we got this is firstly by taking the power down and multiplying it by the t, so we get 2t and that power drops to a 1, so that just becomes 2t and minus 10 because we've just got minus 10t there. So there's our expression for velocity, and then to get the acceleration we need to differentiate that expression for velocity that we've just worked out with respect to time t. So we get a equals dv by dt, which equals 2, because the 2t in the velocity expression is the only thing related to t. So we've got a equals 2, and this means that the acceleration is a constant value of 2 meters per second squared. Lastly, question 3 says the motion of an object is given by s equals 8t squared minus 4t plus 6. Part a says to find an expression for the velocity. So writing down our expression for s, first of all, we have s equals 8t squared minus 4t plus 6. And remember, to get the velocity, we need to differentiate s with respect to time. So so we get v equals ds by dt, which equals 16t minus 4. So just doing the same as before, bringing this power down, multiplying it by 8t, so we get 16t minus the 4, because that expression is t to the power of 1. And the plus 6 is a constant, so we can ignore that one. So we get v equals 16t minus 4. Part B says at what time will the velocity of the object be stationary? Well we've just worked out an expression for velocity in part A, so we can use that and we can put in when v equals 0 to work out what the time is. So if we do that, we've got that the object is stationary when v equals 0, its velocity is 0, so we have 0 equals 16t minus 4, and adding 4 to both sides we get 16t equals 4. Dividing both sides by 16 now we get t equals 4 over 16, which is 0 0.25 seconds. Part C says to find the acceleration. Well remember in part part A we worked out an expression for velocity, so to find the acceleration we just need to differentiate the velocity with respect to time t. So we have a equals dv by dt, which equals 16 meters per second squared, because of the 16t here. So this means that the acceleration is a constant value of 16 meters per second squared. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.